Well, the New York Comedy Film Festival kicks off today, and this week-long event includes more than 100 shows across the five boroughs featuring so many different comedians. And our next guest is one of the performers taking the stage. There he is. Actor and comedian Carlos Santos is performing in the All Latinx lineup. He's also one of the stars of the hit Netflix show, Gentified. Season two premieres in just a couple of days. And aren't we so fortunate to welcome to the show this morning, Carlos Santos. Hello, my Marisol. Friend. I love it when two Boricuas take up two boxes because yes. I feel like this is how it starts. This is how we take over. This is the beginning of the take, the take off. <laughs> well, I'm really sad that I couldn't be there in person. I really wanted to make that work. I yeah. know. We were trying, but you are a very busy man with a lot of Looks things like to it. do. So let's start mm -hmm. off with the New York Comedy Film Festival. Uh, you, I already know you're going to be hysterical, but this is groundbreaking. You're part of an all Latinx uh, portion of the yeah. festival. Dale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're super excited about it. Uh, me and Francisco Ramos, he was in the first season of Gentified. He played uh, one of my fellow cooks. We have been kicking this idea around of just going on tour and, and doing stand-up together, like the comedians of Gentified. <laughs> uh, we also had other uh, folks. We had Felipe Esparza and Jesus Trejo. Uh, also, he's on the second season, but I just didn't work out. Everybody's so busy. So we were just happy that we could put this together and kind of pitch it to the New York Comedy Festival. So, yeah, that's what it is. The comedians have had to fight. And hopefully this is the beginning of a lot more, you know, opening it up. I would love to go on tour with these guys because I love them. And so this is the beginning. This is the pilot program. This is the pilot uh, going program. Into the Gramercy Theater, yeah. That's right, because you have to show it so that they can see it and believe it and know that it works. Right. And I, I have a lot of faith in you. Um, so you've done some stand up shows recently. What's it been like getting back in front of a live audience after the you long, know, the long yeah. COVID lockdown? It's definitely the, the literal term of shaking the rust off. Uh, <laughs> I, my first show back from pandemic was like 14 months after uh, lockdown started, and it was for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, my friend Jesus Trejo uh, invited me to go perform at the comedy store and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. But it was like 24 hour notice and I was like, oh no, I don't, what am I? But it was fantastic because all the comedians would come on and it felt like a support group. Everybody was like, hi, my name is Carlos. I haven't done comedy in 14 months, 20 days and six hours. Um, it was great. But you know, any time to get in front of a live crowd is, is fantastic, whether it's awkward or not. I just, right. I love it. Right, awkward or not, I love it. Yeah. So many of our viewers know you, as you mentioned, as Chris on the hit show, Gentified. I love it. That's where I, I laid eye to, eyes on you a lot earlier in your career, but we won't delve into that <clears throat> MTV. Um, <coughs> but, <laughs> so long ago. <laughs> So long ago, and yet you still look like a baby. Um, it's all filters. It's, <laughs> it's that it's that Puerto Rican air. I know it's yeah. all that it's it's who needs it's serum? All my mama, literally my parents. Yes, this is ex all genetic. Exactly. Gentified was such a hit. It was great to see uh, other Latinos reflected uh, on the screen. We left season one with a lot of mystery. So what's going to happen in season two? What can you tell us? It looks like Chris may have a potential love interest, which is shocking to me because you were a bit of a curmudgeon in the first uh, <laughs> in the first season. You was everyone was going but, right. You wanted to go left. You had your yeah. own, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a goofball situation. No, I, I'm super excited because uh, all of the cliffhangers are going to get paid off in the second season and we go right into it. Uh, what I love about Chris's arc in the second season is he's got a lot more emotional responsibility. He was kind of a goofball. He was yeah. the comic relief. This time around, he's dealing with the potential love interest. He's got to get, you know, he's got to get it together. He Hello. Can't messing around. <laughs> also, he's dealing with, you know, uh, his dad is finally in the picture in person. Right. In the in the first season, we just heard him on the phone, and it was always very like, you know, uh, problematic. Right. It was a back and forth, but now he gets to confront that. And also dealing with Pop's possible deportation. There's a lot of emotional stuff. I love the fact that it's going to be, you're going to get to see a little bit more uh, vulnerable. Yeah. Vul vulnerable goofball. That's the, the vulnerable best. goofball. Have you met Dan Manorino? He's one of the oh, anchors. Oh, that's where like, I said he did the. Yeah, in the, he could be altar. your stand in. I like that. Um, t tell us, by the way, you've got all these trumpets and woodwind oh, yeah. instruments and brass instruments. What is going on with you? Well, I am currently in New Orleans uh, shooting, uh, filming a movie. So this is why I couldn't be. In person, we really—I was so I was so pumped to. I know to we were gonna get to see we were gonna see each other in person. Um, can you tell us anything about the movie, or you know, is it top secret? Uh, well, we haven't announced it yet. All right, but fine. 
So we got to wait for, for it to be deadline official before I can talk about it. All right. Otherwise, I'd love to go into details. This is very, this is all, all by the way, you, as you know, this all happened within the last month, the last week. Hours. No, in the yeah. last 48, last week, right. you were here, then you weren't here. You're back. We're going to see you at the New York Comedy Festival. We're going to see you in yeah. Hintified. And we're going to see you later because we have run out of time. This is a great week. This is a great week. So 10th <laughs> is the uh, second season and 13th at the Gramercy Theater on Saturday. Comedians of Hentify. We're running out of time. Let's get it all out. You know I love you. Don't act like you don't know me when I see you in public, okay? Oh, sure. <laughs> I just won't look at you directly in the eyes as, as, as per oh, wait, request. Oh, right? I have time. I have time. <laughs> That's the last thing these producers should have ever told me. Can we talk about your Oreo addiction? Oh, uh, yeah. It's kind of a... <laughs> It's kind of the longest running bit that I <laughs> that I had. Oh wow, you really <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> we we dove in deep. We dove in deep. This is the longest running bit. I it started like in 2016. I just posted like a picture or two people started responding and it just I was like, "Let me see if I could do every other line on the Instagram uh, grid of and just put a Oreos. new flavor." Yeah. And I'll see how li how long it can go. It's been 5 years. And every <laughs> Are, is, is Nabisco giving you a cut? No. No, because sometimes I'll that. make fun of the flavors. I think, I don't know, I'm just going to let them come to me because I sometimes I don't review them properly. Like candy corn, who, that's crazy. You had apple but, cider vinegar. I almost slapped you through the Instagram. No <laughs> way. Listen, it's good for fasting, so I, that's just, it's science. Carlos Santos, you, your Oreos, your talents, always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so and much. So we'll see you in person at some point. I believe it. I believe it. I do too. And if you want to check out Carlos at the New York Comedy Festival, just visit the website listed below on the screen for more information on how to get tickets. Mwah! Abrazo. Felicidades. Nos vemos pronto.